Hey guys, I'm back, and this is the second episode of Stories with Gray. We left off on the last episode where I had just shot my series Prada Marfa, and I had begun to sell my work not just in the flea market, but also online on a website called One King's Lane. And I, for the first time in my life, am just printing and selling this these images like crazy. They are giving me events um, once every month. And the Prada Marfa project is just so well received. People truly are buying not just one, but two, three, four to hang together on their walls. Meanwhile, in the flea market, I'm doing every Sunday. People are just loving the series. Um, and I, I couldn't be more happy. The reality is, is just a couple months before this, I didn't know where, you know, if, how long I could sustain. I didn't know if this was going to become a real career. One King's Lane was a startup. And at first they only had tens of thousands of people subscribing. But as 2011 went by, they were receiving, I mean, hundreds of thousands of new subscribers. So people had never seen my work before. And month by month, when we would do an event, there were more people shopping and new eyes on the series. What was so fascinating about working with One King's Lane online was that I could understand what uh, my images were being viewed the most and which were being viewed the least, in addition to which were selling and which weren't selling. So I was starting to learn just like a little bit more of maybe how and what quality, what sort of composition people were drawn to when they were making purchases for art inside their house. So I've got to really hunker down and think like, Gray, what is your next big project? How do you overcome this su like super successful out of the gate series? So sure enough, earlier that year in April, Jeff and I had decided to go on a road trip to Vegas. We got there really late and in the morning, I drew back the curtains and I looked down and I couldn't believe it. We were 30 stories above basically the largest swimming pool I'd ever seen. And it was filled with people swimming, all the chaise lounge chairs, the color, the bright blue water. And I thought, oh my gosh, I love this. So I grabbed my camera, I pushed it against the window and I took a couple pictures. And then when we got back to Los Angeles, I made this photograph, my computer screensaver. And from like April to September, I saw this photo every day and one afternoon, this sort of light bulb in my mind, it just exploded. So I thought, how can I execute this? How can I take more images looking down on swimming pools? And I had decided to go to Miami that December for the Art Basel Art Fair. So when I got to Miami, I tried a few different hotels and got the same response. No, I was not gonna be allowed on the roof to shoot these images. So I thought, how else can I get up in the air? How else can I get this perspective? And that's when the helicopter idea came to me. So I Googled helicopter comma Miami. And sure enough, I, the first company I dialed, the man who answered the phone was the pilot. And he told me that he'd be happy to take me up, that he loved photography and he would take the door off the side of the helicopter so that I could lean out to get the shot. And I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna die. <laughs> like, this is crazy. When we took off in the helicopter, it was honestly like a magic carpet ride. We just floated across the sky, but little did I realize that there was this tiny rainstorm that was about to blow off the Atlantic and hit Miami Beach. So when we got over there, I was hovering above the pool and there was not a soul in sight, just, wasn't the vision I had. And in this moment of defeat, like I had been told no by the hotel and now I'm in the helicopter and it just rained. I put my camera down and I looked up and that is when I saw the beach. And the pilot took me over and we started to fly along South Beach. And 
the umbrellas, the chaise lounge chairs, just the sand being this incredible blank canvas. I was like, woo, I love this. And I started shooting and, you know, it was only about five minutes we flew along there, but I saw something, I saw something that I loved and that was the beach from above. And so we flew back landed and I went back to Los Angeles, uploaded the images, and I remember thinking, wow, this is special. This is different. This is cool. And I had made a little bit of money, right, from the Prada Marca collection. So I decided to start to spend it and invest. And I basically got on an airplane to any destination with the beach that I could. The first place I went was Hawaii. Then after that, I went to Rio de Janeiro. And after that, I flew to Sydney for literally 48 hours. And by the time I looked at all these images together, I realized that I had crowded beaches. I had empty beaches. I had great shots of surfers. I had teal water. I had dark green water. I had white sand. I had black sand. I had such a nice variety that it really was a beautiful series that I could then try to sell on One King's Lane. What I didn't realize was that I basically was just scratching the surface of something that was so incredibly massive. I had no idea what was about to happen. So I showed One King's Lane this new series and they loved it. And we went ahead with the event and I'll never forget waking up and seeing it all live on the website. And these images said, sold out, sold out, sold out. And within hours, the beach images were just gone. You couldn't even get one. And the inventory just, oh my God. I mean, it was unbelievable. Prada Marfa never sold out. This was like a whole new level of something people loved. And I had no idea it was gonna get this kind of response. What was really nuts was as this was taking off, so was my, my life with Jeff. And I asked him to marry me and he said yes. We started planning our wedding and the aerial beach work is taking off and this is in March and our wedding is in September. So between those six months, I had to go and shoot many more beaches. I was in Europe shooting San Tropez, Lisbon. I went to the Hamptons, Mexico, San Francisco. I shot Los Angeles while also planning this amazing wedding with the man of my dreams. So we couldn't legally get married in California. So we decided that we would have a legal ceremony in Massachusetts, which is nice because we met in Boston during college and then we moved to LA together. So we went back to Massachusetts, had a small wedding with our family. It's really, really cute, right on the beach in Provincetown. And then in September, we had a big, large wedding on Lake Michigan where my family has a summer house. And it's amazing looking back because you see these pictures of us and we have no idea that our life is about to change or yet alone that in a couple years, he and I are gonna be working together. We're just two guys who are deeply in love, celebrating this magical time with our friends and family. And everything about that wedding was so authentic and joyful. And it was so simple. It wasn't a really over the top wedding. It was just like, it was just a real dream, you know? Like we didn't know we were ever gonna have the chance to get married and have that moment. The fact that we got a tent and our families came together and our friends all flew to Michigan, that was just so special. Like, I mean, I can't believe I'm gonna get to tell my kids that your dad's got married when it was still illegal for same-sex marriage. You know what I mean? That's just crazy. So after the wedding, I had one more big event on One King's Lane and it did so well. I started to think, should I be thinking about maybe my own brand, my own website? All these ideas started coming through and I just knew I needed to do something and I needed to do something soon. I hope that by hearing these stories, we are able to connect and that by listening to this whole journey, you are able to understand the value of your art. It's so much more than a photograph.